Greetings everyone, I just wanted to do a quick video on the Celestron OAG that I'm putting on the Edge 11 for F7 with the 0.7x reducer. It's been an adventure getting the right spacers and pieces together to make it all work, but I think I finally have it here. First of all, anybody that's wondering why this piece of cardboard is on here, this is for the Hyperstar. I made a little cutout to make the uh, the edge a little more rounded all the way around. Uh, that's why this is kind of hodgepodge on here. A 3D print would have been a little bit better, but it does the job. The key for the OAG is to make, make this distance right here be as small as possible. So I focused on putting more spacers on this side. I ended up using the SCT adapter. That coupled with this blue ball um, SCT to SCT adapter, it's one inch, one inch and 24.5 millimeters. This is the standard OAG connector that fits the SCT adapter and this spacer. And of course, this is the 7X reducer, which has its three and a quarter inch rings um, right here. <clears throat> the problem is they don't really make any, uh, they don't really make any three and a quarter inch to the larger three and a quarter inch spacers. And the Celestron OAG comes with a bunch of rings <clears throat> so that you can adapt to various spacer sizes, including 48 millimeter for bigger full width cameras. Now this camera is the ASI 294MC Pro, so it's a 4x3 uh, sensor. So I don't need to worry about that as much uh, to have a 48 millimeter coming from the actual telescope. It can be the smaller diameter and still not have much vignetting or any vignetting in the camera. Of course I will get vignetting because I have this one quarter inch filter wheel here. That's a different story. So what I did was I bought this extra OAG adapter, the large OAG adapter for, for the larger width. It does fit onto the reducer ring, but the distance is too small. So if I find out that this doesn't work as well as say the bigger diameter, uh, precise parts, you can custom order a spacer that will fit three and a quarter inch to three and a quarter inch to the reducer and fill this gap. It costs around $200 to do that versus the $20 that this small adapter does. But I think for this camera and for this OAG setup, it should do okay. One other point to make is that they have the adjustment screws here. You can loosen this and then rotate the camera as needed or rotate the other end as needed on both sides of the Celestron OAG. And the rotation ability is kind of nice. Just a little further explanation on the uh, getting the focus distance correct for both the guide camera and the main camera. There's a prism that sits inside here and when the light comes from the telescope it hits the prism and goes back to the main camera and also deflects up and goes to the guide camera. So you want this distance going from this prism to the sensor here to match that of the distance from this prism to the sensor back right around in here at 6.5 millimeters deeper. So that distance and this distance should be the same for both to be in focus at the same time. And if we take a look at my diagram here, which I've modified originally, and I thought this distance here was 135.8, but it's actually 135. Now I've come up with 15 and a half for the threads, and there's a 15 millimeter spacer on, on the other side of the OAG. We have the fireball on the right side, and the SCT adapter. And all that said, that comes out to about 145.3. About 0.7 or so short but we're within the one to three millimeter recommended range with F7. All right, here we have a look at the OAG 
after several nights of frustrations, I was almost ready to give up on this thing, but eventually I got it right. I got the right parts together and I'm getting a uh, decently illuminated image for the guide camera. Now, the biggest trick here was getting this piece here, which is a one inch, 25.4 millimeter blue ball, as I've mentioned before. Uh, the blue ball, 25.4 here, and this is now a 16.5 millimeter. And that gives me 154.1 from here to the edge of the flange up here. And when you subtract off the thread distance and the add on the 6.5 millimeter for the sensor on the camera, which sits in further, you end up at pretty much 146. And the last night I did image with this, I was getting a very good RMS, total RMS at 0.63 on average for over an hour, where before that would be anywhere from 0.85 to 1.29 on my first attempts. And that could have been due to any number of factors though. Maybe this adjustment here or adjusting the, the guide camera. Uh, the guide camera I also set square so that when we go over here to the guide camera image, which is in the dome right now, but you can see this is the right edge and this is the shadow. So it's 90-95% illuminated and most people seem to have the same results compromising between the main image and the guide camera image. Um, and that took some doing. You have to rotate the guide camera so that it becomes square and you also have to rotate this uh, whole OAG so that the sensor uh, the prism is sitting flush on top of the sensor and not in one of the corners creating a shadow. I could probably even lower the prism down a little bit further to get rid of that outer edge. I haven't done that yet because I'm afraid to touch it right now because I was getting such good results. I'm just leaving it where it is. Here's a look at what I was talking about. You can see the sensor down there, which is a rectangle left or right. It might be hard to see in this video. Um, but I've positioned the I've positioned the sensor so that it's square to the top and it doesn't obstruct any of the image. All right, I just wanted to point out that the position I ended up here with this guide camera, I didn't have to extend it much further than I needed to. It's pretty much right at the edge of the barrel extension that comes with this 174mm Mini. Uh, if you have more spacing between the OAG and the camera, then this would have to come out further, or a lot further in that case, and then you have to get really inventive to find the right adapters to extend that. I couldn't find the right adapters to extend that further, so that's why I went with more space here than here. And that's where I'm at. I'm about to take it off and take some dark, dark shots and then I do the bad pixel map for PhD2. Since that last clip was recorded, I did decide to lower the uh, prism down just a hair to give more illumination on the uh, guide camera. And I checked the main image. My corners look normal for a filter wheel. There's no shadowing going on, extra shadowing in any corner. Let me come over here to the guide camera. And you can see now I've gotten the image even further over. The illumination is nearly completely full at this point. So that's probably more than fine. And uh, we'll see how things roll in my next session tonight. See if I can get the same kind of numbers and go from there. I've also added a uh, third weight to my RA axis because it was the worst in error out of the two axes. And that should help uh, most people with this kind of a load tend to have at least three counterweights. So keeping the weight inward more for that inner, inner area there, plus the one on the outside, balances things out even better. And we'll see how it goes. And that is the Celestron OAG. Don't give up on it. You can get everything working just right with some tweaking.
Greetings again, everyone. Today we're going to do a video on the OAG, otherwise known as OAG, the off axis guider. Ah. Greetings, everyone. Today we're going to do a video on the off axis guider. <coughs> Greetings again, everyone. Today we're going to do a video. Oh, hey. No, Daddy, no OAG. Oh, why, thank you. On the OAG. 